in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation, and I it's great to be with all of you. We apologize for starting late, and one of the reasons why I started late was because I had a couple of interviews this morning, radio interviews. So earlier today I had a radio interview at about 5.30 on my book, The Compendium of Mary Devotions. And uh, just a, about a minute ago, I finished another radio interview in which EWTN Radio Live wanted to interview me also on my book, Compendium Mary and Devotion. So I apologize for for being late with you. But I uh, have to preach the word also by EWTN and other radio stations. So the more we can preach the word of God, the better. So thank you for your patience. And uh, as always, uh, we like to start off our we all we like to start off our prayer by inviting Mary to be with us. And Mary has, of course, many beautiful titles. Mary, Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church, and Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. So let's uh, let's say the prayer that Mary loves most. She's also known as our our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's turn to Mary and ask Mary to to pray pray with us and to pray for us. So how good it is to have Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's say that prayer in honor of Mary. And, and as Carmen is pointing out, Feliz Día de las Madres uh, in the Hispanic world. So we'll be celebrating Mother's Day here in the United States this coming Sunday. But in the Hispanic world, uh, May 10th is actually Mother's Day. So we'll, we'll say the prayer of uh, Mary, the mother of God, for all the mothers in the Hispanic world, as well as, well as all the mothers in the world, that they would find co solace and comfort and joy by drawing closer and closer to Mary, who is truly the mother of God, the mother of the church, and the mother of each and every one of us. So let's pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now we'd like to invite to be with us our spiritual director. Our spiritual director is none other than the the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the paraclete. He's also known as the gift of gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the our counselor as well as our consoler. Holy Spirit is also known as the sweet guest of the soul. What a beautiful title, the sweet guest of the soul. Holy Spirit is also our counselor and he is our interior master. These are the words of um, St. Paul in his letter to the Romans. He says that we really don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say Abba, which means Father. So let's beg the Holy Spirit to help us to get to know and love God and to serve him by our words and by our actions. Let's pray the classical prayer. 
Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who didn't strike the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise. And ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady Guadalupe, pray for us. Our Lady Fatima, pray for us. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. Saint Damien of Molokai, pray for us. Saint John of Avila, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. So my friends, I promise to pray for you in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass today. And of course, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is by far, it's the greatest prayer in the world. And how privileged we are as Catholics to have the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. How privileged we really are. So in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, my friends, I, I will be praying for all of you and place you all on the altar with the following intentions. First, I'd like to pray that all of us would be open to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps we can say this prayer during the course of the day. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. My next intention, I'd like to pray for our families, that we would be converted, that we will grow in friendship with God, and that we would persevere until the very end. That's right, that we would, that we would grow in love for God, that we would persevere till the end, and that we'd, we would keep growing in our love for God. How important it is for us, my friends, to beg for the grace of perseverance until the end. Perseverance to the end. So, my friends, I think you place all of you on the altar, and God would bless you most abundantly today. Today on the, the church calendar, my friends, we have... Um, two saints that I'd like to mention. And one is uh, St. John of Avila that we celebrate today. St. John of Avila, uh, who has made, St. John of Avila, who's actually made, my friends, by the Pope, uh, a modern doctor of the church. We don't have too many doctors of the church. But he's one of them. Now, when you say a doctor of the church, it's not a medical doctor, of course, but a doctor of the church has two qualities. He has great learning, great learning, but also has great holiness. So the combination of, of great learning and great holiness. You put those two together, then you can have a doctor of the church. The first two women doctors of the church were actually St. Teresa of Avila and St. Catherine of Siena. 
Then there's another saint that we celebrate today. And I'd like to mention him and mention a story in his life that I, I find to be fascinating. So today, May 10th, we also celebrate, my friends, Saint Damien of Molokai. Perhaps you can watch the wonderful movie that was made of him, and it's the name of the movie is Molokai. We all we always always associate Father Damien with Molokai because that's where he was sent as a missionary. He wanted to go there. Molokai, my friends, is one of the one of the many islands in Hawaii. Hawaii was not as of yet annexed as our last state. The last two states were Alaska and Hawaii, making up the 50 states in the United States. But Father Damien wanted to go to Molokai for this reason. He wanted to be a missionary, but he wanted to be a missionary with the poorest of the poor. A missionary with the poorest of the poor. And that would be the lepers. Today we call this Hansen disease. And most of leprosy in the, the first world countries has disappeared. But back a hundred years ago, it was still prevalent. So Father Damien got permission to travel to Molokai to work with the lepers. And he loved these lepers as his brothers and sisters. And he bent over backwards to do all he possibly can to evangelize them and to bring the good news of salvation to these lepers. He ended up by converting many of them to Catholicism. Some of them were Protestants, some of them were non-believers, but his presence was a powerful surge of grace in which he would baptize and he would also convalidate marriages and he did all he possibly can, could on a human level. And if you see the movie, he was a very strong man and he was uh, brought up and raised on a farm. So he was able to cultivate the land he was able to build houses, build a chapel, and he was much stronger than them because the leprosy that they had would actually debilitate them physically, as you can imagine. So I'm gonna, I'll ask you a quickie. I'll ask you a quickie, a tricky question. The tricky question is this: What do you think? What do you think would have been the greatest suffering of Father Damien Svister of Molokai? What do you think would have been his, perhaps his greatest suffering? What do you think? Well, I'll respond to it. His, his greatest suffering would have been the fact that he couldn't go to confession. Why? It was because he, he was the only priest on the island. And now, you know, as priests, I can't go into the mirror and say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. These are my sins. And then absolve myself on in the mirror you can't do that that would be an invalid confession so his greatest suffering was that he couldn't go to confession because there was no priest 
Now, if you see the movie, there's a charming scene where Father Damien hears that there is a priest, I think it may have even been a bishop, that was close by and he was on a ship. He was on a ship. So Father Ram uh, uh, Damien gets in his rowboat and he rows all the way to the to the ship. And on the ship is the is the priest. Father Damien asks the, the priest if he's if he could go to confession. And the priest says, yes, yeah. so there. Father Damien, there in the little boat, he blurted out his sins. He blurted out his sins to this to this priest, and the priest gave him absolution. That was his greatest suffering. Now, my friends, I have to ask I'm gonna have to ask you a, a double pardon today. First is for for arriving late because they had a an interview on EWTN radio at um, up until about 740. And right now we have a consolidated mass at eight o'clock. So I apologize for for cutting our conversation in half, but uh, I'll pray for you in the mass and then it'll be a normal program tomorrow. And I'll have my normal Spanish program at nine o'clock. So God bless you. I will pray for you. I'll place you on the altar. I'll pray for you and pray for me that we will all become great saints. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.